Yo, do me a favor, like this video and subscribe to this channel so that you know every time we drop new content. This time on Finnegan's Garage, we are finally gonna make the Renegade Rogers jet boat hit the water. We got a brand new oil pan from SoCalJetBoats.com's speed shop. And after a whole lot of banging, drilling, grinding, massaging, we're gonna install that thing right here, right now, and go boat. Dually 10 quart marine oil pan. Doesn't exactly bolt on, does it? No, uh, it's late. I've been at this for about three hours now. Uh, test fitting, taking it on and off a dozen times. I think I got it. The last thing I had to do was notch it right here for the starter. It was bumping the starter bolt right there. So I had to notch that right there. It appears to clear. I guess I'll find out once I start putting all the bolts in it, which are probably too long because this is not near as thick as the aluminum pan. So I'm probably gonna have to find a dozen metric bolts, which we probably don't have. So there you go. <laughs> After cutting and modifying the pickup. Yeah. Whew. <laughs> She's not a bolt on. No. Uh, those of you at home, we had to cut the mounting tabs off this, make a new one, then cut half an inch out of this tube and weld the pickup screen back on to give us three eighths of an inch clearance to the bottom of the pan. And now after grinding the corner of the pan, we're gonna try to install the pan, which might not work because the stock bolts are probably too long. I'm stacking washers tonight. Whatever. I don't have a, a plethora of metric hardware in this garage. Uh, we may have some bolts where I don't have 15, 16 of them, however many it takes to put this pan on. So. No, we're not. Whatever. Do what you can with what you got. That's right. It looks cool. Let's hope it doesn't leak. It matches the valve covers. Let's hope the straight fittings out of the side for the oil filter relocation kit don't hit the hole. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not a tunnel boat. It should clear just fine. You think I'll be surprised? Nope. No. I'll be totally surprised with this, this bolt on right now. I always talk about how boats are so easy to work on. Big block Chevy boats are so easy to work on. You got a quarter inch gap in the bolt stop. Uh, <laughs> so a lock washer and a flat washer. And a couple flat washers. Okay. Right, I got no words for this crap. Take it, take it All right, so last night when Dave, crap. Dave wasn't here, I went to Ace Hardware, bought all the right length bolts, bolted this thing on, and this morning Dave came in, put oil in it, and it started leaking. So if you look, good squeeze, good squeeze, good squeeze, and then, whoa. This part where they welded this block on for the remote oil filter setup is bent down. Like it got warped when it got welded. So we now get to take the pan off again and try to straighten that. Can we send it back? Like, I feel like we still need a pan. To find a pan. Like, we can fix it. Like, we don't have a pan. Let's just, let's just fix it and use it. I mean, at this point, we could have made our own pan. No but shit. yes, uh, let's just fix it and put it in there and go boating. Okay. I spent most of last night putting this thing together, and I really thought we'd throw oil in it, bolt the headers on, and go boating today with Kevin. Instead, we get to fix the oil pan. <laughs> in the bummer, there's not a lot of options out there. Like, right now, if you want a fabricated aluminum oil pan... Dude, 12 weeks. You're really? Right. Every, yeah, everyone's out of everything. Out of everything. We're going to work with what we got. We're going to make this work. Those of you at home, if you buy one of these, just know they don't bolt on. Or at least ours didn't. <laughs> Look at that. Not even close. Yeah, look at that, dude. Whoa. It's nearly an eighth of an inch when you go out to the end. And that side... The, the flange is bent down as well. Yeah, we need to put this upside down on the welding table and then flatten the pan rails. Here's what I'm talking about. And if you can see it right here, it doesn't sit flat at all because the pan is bent. So this is a new table that we got. Uh, it's from Stronghand Tools. And uh, the cool thing about it is it's got all these holes and clamps. And so we're gonna be able to clamp this side. Holy moly. Yeah, look at that. Did you see the gap right there? Yeah. It's an eighth of an inch. That's fine. That's not good. All right. I'm gonna have to hit it about six times harder than that. Moving. 
I'm like watching the gap and I hadn't changed the bin. I still see under it. I think that'll pull a so, gasket though. So this right here is up. I think we just need to whack this down. Yeah, that'll hold a gasket. Oh yeah, no more daylight. Especially with a little silicone on it, just for extra. It's much better. There we go. Much better. Okay. Back together. Okay. Ready? Here goes nothing. moment renegade about to hit the water for the first time here in Georgia it's raining <laughs> don't care going anyway after having the engine in and out I think no less than three times three different oil pans and all the work it took to get this oil pan on this motor to fix our oil pressure problem we are leg testing the renegade today i don't, I don't really care if it rains or not we're gonna put it in the water right now i'll make sure it works and is safe and then after that it's all newburn he gets to find out how fast it is man it looks good in the water yeah. dang uh, dude, th like this right here the rogers bubble deck hole classic as good as it gets my Let's eat, let's eat. <sighs> All right, we have fuel pressure. I just want to ride in it. turning boats. A Rogers Bonneville, originally a lot of people raced them as circle boats and they would have a skeg dropped in through the middle of the hole right in front of the jet drive. Hmm. And um, so they, they would turn really good with that. And then guys started drag racing them and cutting the skeg off. Um, in fact, I did that. My, <laughs> the, one of my very first drag boats was a Rogers Bonneville TR just like this. It was red and white. And uh, it was infamous because we went to the track once and just kept making it faster by making it lighter. We cut the skeg off and picked up like a tenth of a second. Dang. And it still wasn't fast enough, so we took the cocktail seats out and borrowed my friend Chris's bucket, put it in there, picked up another tent. It had a false floor between the stringers that was like three quarters of an inch plywood. Gotta go. Laminated carpet. It took pry bars. We pried it out of the boat, stood it up against the fence, ran the boat, picked up like two tenths of a second. 
I don't even think we took it home with us. I think we threw it in the trash. It never <laughs> went back in the boat because all we cared about was going faster. Yep. I got the idea to buy this boat back like, I don't know, a year ago. And uh, so he's been in his mind thinking about driving it ever since. Oh, here we go. This is his first hot rod boat. Like, he's never had a boat with headers, you know? Nice. And it's, it's poetic. We're, he's out there driving in a rainstorm. Worst, yeah. worst conditions possible, yeah. but at least he's out there. Yeah. After our initial lake test, we realized the engine was running very, very rich at part throttle. And so we went back to my house, we ripped the float bowls off of the Holly double pumpers, took five jet sizes out of the primary side of each carburetor and put it back together to head to the lake and test again. It's ready. When I move it, nothing's happening. You're not moving the draggy. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're not recording, are you? Okay, good. Uh, just just, just shove me back and uh, forget that ever happened. You guys, you guys can edit, right? Yeah. All right, now it's moving one mile an hour. Happier. It's not popping and farting anymore. Uh, it didn't pull any more RPM on the tack, but it's definitely running cleaner than it did before. It needs nitrous. I, th I think you ought to run it, and as soon as you're used to it, we put nitrous on it. But it's a lot of fun. Like it turns good, steers good. It feels very safe at 72. Like it's it's not doing anything weird. It's not shine walking. It's just motoring through this. Yeah, dude, she's cool. You got to drive it. Okay. I don't know how to work the draggy at all. Like, I just looked down. I was like, eh, 72. Okay, I'm gonna lift here. You know, <laughs> it probably would have gone 75. And uh, so I think if you put a if you put a 200 shot on this, this thing will probably run about 100 miles an hour. Like, it'll be a monster. Gotta put another degree or two of timing on it. See if it gains more. There's no reason not to. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's only got 27 in it, so. Yeah. Let's do that. And then you can stand on it and just look at the tack. The tack will tell you whether it's making more power. Okay. You know, if it makes more power, it'll pick up 100 RPM. What did you peak at? Uh, it was at 49.5. Okay. It sounded like more. It sounded better. Yeah, I mean, it sounds way better. It drives better. Everything about it is better now. Um, it just didn't turn anymore on the top end. You know. I think we talked about it earlier. This is basically a dyno. This thing is going to absorb every ounce of power this motor makes, and it's going to stop it from accelerating. And basically, when at, whenever that happens, you either add more horsepower or trim the impeller and make it smaller to gain more RPM. So right now, this motor wants to turn this pump 5,000 RPM because this jet drive was built for a nitrous motor. So that's what we're at. 
This motor, you know, in a car will rev much higher and it probably makes power up there at 7,000 RPM, but that jet drive's not gonna let it turn that hard. Uh, you know, it's just, it's a curve. And right now the jet drive is ahead of the curve of this motor where it makes power. Is that an easy swap, like say an impeller swap or something like that? If uh, you have one that's all set up for the jet drive, yeah, in half an hour we can swap impellers. We just don't have a spare for it. You know, that's set up with all the right clearances on the front and the back side to mm -hmm. pull today. So that's not just as easy as just getting one and just swapping it out. It's actually got to be set up for the, yeah, for the pump. Yeah, there's some measuring. you got to measure the front side clearance. You've got to measure the radial clearance because it's a really tight setup in there. And it's basically balanced by the water that's going through it. And if you don't get the clearance right, there's a wear ring around the impeller. And it just buries itself in that, eats the pump alive. You know? So you don't want to just borrow anybody's impeller throw it in there. You want to have a very smart, way more precise people than me and you right you know put that in there <laughs> i don't build jet drives at all i just break them <laughs> well, all right um yeah let's put another degree in it and then let you take it out all right. okay that's one more degree of timing dave sweet go see if she turns some more some more raining. rpms Burpums. some burpums. burpums see if we get some more mphs so it turned 4,900 when I drove it. If it went five, Challenge accepted. that would be good. 4,900 equals about 71, 72 miles an hour. Good luck. Have you done a hole shot yet? I, I did not hole shot it. That was just cruising and whacking it. So the way to hole shot it is the momentary toggle on the steering wheel. When the steering wheel is straight up, pull it down. That puts this nozzle down. Hammer the gas, and as soon as you hammer the gas, flip it up. As soon as I floor it, flip it up. Yep. Yeah, this works. Try it. It's up now. Go the other one. There we go. That's up. Go down. There we go. All right. So that's down. That's where you hole shot it. Launch it there and then so floor it. As soon as I floor it, push up on it. Yep. That's it. Give it a give it a five count after he lets go. Then you know you're about deep enough. All right. Iron hole. The timing of getting the nozzle angle where it needs to be is critical. Yeah. If he waits too long and he mashes the throttle, it'll drive on the bow and it'll fishtail all over the place, which is really unnerving. And if he mashes the throttle and gets it, the nozzle to go up too soon, really? it just wheelies. Wheelies are cool. Yeah. <laughs> that got his attention. So eventually, you realize that having a human operate the nozzle is not the best way. And uh, you just put it on a timer. And as soon as you go wide open, it triggers it and does it for you. And then you go bracket racing. Big Lake and expect to not have boat.